Right. Welcome to Unlocking Astrology, another episode. And let me welcome the key, the key master himself, the unlocker himself, the one and only Samuel Reynolds. Hi, brother. How are you? I'm well, sister. I'm yes. doing very well. You look good. You look like you got a little sun and you look healthy. So God, praise yep. Praise be. I'm in a different location, so okay, I'm enjoying the sun here. I see. I see. I say. I see. Amen. All of that. Listen, um, I've been obsessed recently and been talking about it a lot. I believe something's coming down the pike around the corner uh, from China. I think I think we're currently in a war that we're not aware. At least we're not talking about it openly. And I think it's going to escalate. I think China has a hundred year plan that they're probably at the end of where it's total world domination. I just been having this, you know, I've been watching, reading the tea leaves. And I said, let me see if Sam can suss this out from the charts. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to go forward and your listeners and viewers will remember, I hope something I've said before. So this planet Uranus has been in Taurus for about, three years now. And one of the things to remember about Uranus and Taurus, a lot of people have been talking about, oh, big change related to particular things like agriculture. That's true. But I think of Uranus and Taurus as tectonic shifts, slow tectonic shifts. So this is harking back to something that also happened about 84 years ago. Now, why is this important? Because if people think back, this is like more like the 30s. And we were seeing some slow shifts in terms of how things are going or were going at that particular time in politics, whether that's the ascendancy, the slow ascendancy of the United States. It was very slow, you know, still a marginal country relatively. Um, hadn't stepped up completely in terms of production to the point that it had in the 40s, but still Europe was going through some shifts. We have the rise of Nazi Germany, all these things. You go and flip forward now these 84 years and we're seeing a similar thing. We're seeing these slow shifts. And one of the things I've been talking about, you know, different places is seeing the slow shifts related to China, Iran, Saudi Arabia, right? Obviously tying in Israel. So there are things that are shifting that we're seeing movements that will come to fruition in, in a few years. As I mentioned, I, I think last time I talked to you, when Uranus has gone into Gemini, the United States has never not been at war. So I believe there's a movement happening. Now, going back to China. And, and just to underscore, the 30s that led into the 40s, it was that war that made America great, like correct. in terms of finances and world power and domination. Interesting. The net result of that war. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the Japanese said it after Pearl Harbor some time after, we may have awakened a sleeping giant, right? I'll never forget that. That's from that movie Midway, when they were like, yo, okay, we don't know what that stirred, but we got to do what we got to do. So also going back to the 30s, Japan. Anyway, cut ahead. The United States, you know, I would say not the United States, China has been playing Go, and the United States has been playing checkers. And Go is a game which is not about just jumping and moving around the board, but where you encircle your opponent. Similar to if those who haven't played Go, how you might play Othello, if you remember Othello. That's kind of like the milder version, smaller version of Go. Now, the Chinese have been playing Go by infiltrating, and I'm going to use that word, various parts of the globe, whether we're talking about in South America and building infrastructure there, Africa and building infrastructure there. And then other parts, you know, the Caribbean, like I was vacationing in uh, the Bahamas. And next thing you know, I see like, you know, throngs of Chinese workers coming out of a building, right? So they've been building this plan. And what I wanna show is this chart. Let me share, come on technology. <laughs> Your technology is loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's the chart for the People's Republic of China. I'm going to magnify it so it's a little bigger. Okay. This is for October 1st, 1949. This time is a rectified time 
of 3.01 and 36 seconds p.m. in Beijing, China. And those of you, you may not be able to like, well, what am I looking at? Well, what you're looking at is a chart for a country that has the sun in Libra with double Aquarius, meaning Aquarius rising and the moon is also in Aquarius. So the idea of a people's republic is spot on because Aquarius is how we deal with the idea of the collective, how we deal with the broad spectrum of different people. Now, let's not be completely deceived. On the other end of that are two planets I've talked about before, especially in relation to us being African-Americans, Mars and Pluto are conjoined in Leo. So that's about power, right? Mm -hmm. So China also keeps a very tight grip, as we know, on its population, right? And the idea of it will be strong. But the, the ideal, the moon in Aquarius is thinking about the people and serving China. And that's something to important because you mentioned world domination. I don't think China is like, it's not seeking the same thing as Europeans, right? They're looking for the preservation of China and being able to secure what helps their population, whether that's having settlements and having other places to go as they demonstrated with Tibet or even other parts of India. Like, they have land grabbed with India before. I mean, they did it recently. They did it, you know, 40 years ago. They may do it again. If the Chinese, because they have like over a billion people need space and need places to go, they'll get it. They'll, they'll, they'll figure it out. But they're not necessarily interested in completely colonizing the population. What oh, they the want- part, are they in culling? I, I was uh, having a conversation yeah. with someone and I said, um, China's okay with sacrificing 100 million of its people. It's yes. okay, it has a, a, a very agnostic a actuarial pro process. It, 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 it calculates, you know, and it's okay with sacrificing 100 million because it's a billion plus of them. America right. doesn't can't do that, nor does it have no. the to do that. So we're, you, it's a must, you brought up the Japanese, those kamikaze fighters were willing to die. Yes. America couldn't handle that because none of us were willing to die for this country like that. And mm -hmm. so we dropped nuclear bombs on them to stop them because that was the only way that that was gonna happen. Well, oh, be quiet. no, I don't know about that. We have, I mean, by the, that, by the point that we had, I should say we, the United States decided to drop the atomic bomb we had pretty much war, won the war of the Pacific. So that was just a test to see if it worked? It was just to flex. Oh God, okay, all right, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we didn't need to drop those bombs. Is there karma? Um, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm so, sorry. it and, and that's actually important because the Chinese, and I'm glad you brought that up, you know, one thing to remember about the Chinese in their history, their very long history, it's a very complicated history, and I'm always learning more and more about it, but the little I do know, I do recognize that the Chinese also had, or parts of China have been colonized by the Japanese as well. So they also have a fear, um, a justifiable fear of being colonized. So again, it's about protecting China and the Chinese. Mm. So when we think about this moon and we think about it rising, there's a certain protectiveness, defensiveness, and focus on people and peoplehood that I think that are important for the Chinese. And it's only when this is what the United States has to pay attention to or what we need to pay attention to. Now, why is this important? Why are we talking about this now? Just because other than, you know, you are obsessing about this, but you may be hooked into something deeper that justifies that obsession. So what's happening planetarily is that Jupiter and Saturn are both traveling through the sign Aquarius. Now, Jupiter is going to dip out for a little bit in just a, in less than a month into Pisces, but then he's going to go back into Aquarius. What does this mean? This focuses on organizational and I would say growth in China that may be unparalleled in recent history. There's a growth spurt that China is likely to be dealing with. But 
with that growth comes a challenge. As Saturn moves toward Pluto and Mars being opposite to those planets, what may happen is that the Chinese may feel a need to kind of tighten up and maintain those levels of power. And how that may come up may be like the Chinese wanting to have their level of autonomy without interference. And the United States is prone to run interference as are some other countries. So that could be where we have another test related to you know, the United States and American foreign relations, specifically as it may relate to Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong is a test case for Chinese control. And Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Well, Taiwan is a longstanding one. And the Chinese have been willing to, um, I suppose they've been willing to kind of play the long game related to Taiwan, as long as the United States has been willing not to recognize it fully as completely separate from China. Now, the question is whether we'll keep maintaining that. Mm. All right. Because the North Node in Aries suggests when they establish this Republic of China, that independence, their level of being able to support themselves and take care of themselves is paramount. And anything that violates that, the Chinese will be up in arms about. Um, they weren't and have, they, they were somewhat threatened a little bit by Trump, but ultimately Trump, they realized, was kind of shooting himself in the foot and American farmers in the foot and, and beyond, because the Chinese were like, listen, we'll go elsewhere and get the soy or be able to supply whatever that we need, you know, whether that's from Brazil or whatever we need to get, which has compromised, you know, American subsidies and the like, especially with farmers. So they're playing the long game, as you said, and surrounding the United States. And um, I, yeah, I think we have reason, especially as Saturn is going through Aquarius, their first house, to be mindful. So what's the name of that game again? Because now I got to go. 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 Have you played Go? Once. Did you win? It was fascinating. I played a lot of chess. Yeah. Um, but Go is fascinating. It's, it's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a bigger board than Othello, but it's the same principle. And you look to surround your opponent. Mm. Uh, okay. Can you unshare? Because I want I want to just yeah. ask you a few questions or, or just... I guess make some statements. Uh, and, and um, because of your okay, hold on. Let me... All right, there we go. I stopped sharing. Okay, and because of your your background, because you have a little Africana kind of studies in it, you know, it's interesting that you you lay out these games. You know, chess is a war game where the the goal is to capture the king, and the queen has all of these powers, and her job is to protect the king, uh, who can move in all directions but one space. The queen can move in all directions, but uh, in, in many spaces. Uh, then there's, as you mentioned, checkers, which many Americans un understand checkers. When you, your goal is to get kinged at some point by jumping over in empty spaces. Uh, this go game I've never heard of before until today, but now I'm gonna go deep into it. And the oldest game of them all, Awari, which mm -hmm. is an African game. Are you familiar with it? It's, it has the little yeah, bowls. I, I literally got this Awari board from Ghana when I was there. It has the boards. Yeah, and these are. Uh -huh. And it has like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so I've seen it, I've not played that game. All right, so I got this at the uh, castle. Um, I guess they call it a castle where where the uh, enslaved people were kept. And I, I, I bought this when I was there. Um, but this game is fascinating because it speaks to Africans because to win this game, the only way you can win this game is to leave your opponent with at least one seed. So you mm. can't win the game by wiping your opponent out. And I, I feel like, I don't know if that puts the African natured people at a disadvantage because we're always considering victory uh, not as a total sum wipeout of an entire person, but leaving your opponent with something to rebuild with. That's our nature. Mm -hmm. Other games want to obliterate you, want you to heal, want you to tap out, want you to be gone. This go game surrounding, after you surround your opponent, what happens? 
you win when they no longer have any more moves. Okay. And they so just, they have no other possibilities. What's your, what's your recommendation for people who live in a nation that has built up karm, karmatic uh, energy, have done some things that it will have to spiritually pay for, uh, and in a world that is increasingly smaller at the same time, more divisive. And, you know, as global citizens, our allegiance should be global, you know. Uh, what do you suggest for, for folk watching this right now as you are looking at this chart? Because in my estimation, I think it's going to go down in a few years. And I want to be prepared. I want us to be prepared to be able to bounce if we have to you know, go somewhere, chill, wait and see if there's dust to settle. Maybe, maybe there's no place to run. I don't know. And it's not about running and, you know, ducking and running. It's about, you know, okay, let's, something's got to play out here. I don't want to be at ground zero. I don't want to be in the middle of it. Um, at the same time, you know, I think it could galvanize America in a way that World War II did. You know, you had Tuskegee, I mean, you had Black people participating in a fight when they were sitting at the back of the bus here, going over liberating folk. Uh, I spoke to a couple of black men who liberated a concentration camp in Germany uh, and had a discussion with them and what that felt like, you know, to, to come back here and to ride on a car where the Germans were treated like human beings and you were not, you know, and it's just, it's just interesting, this country and all of the entanglements that it has. Uh, I'm not talking about America right now. In China, I, I'm, Listen, I'm not scared of them, but I'm like, they don't give a F. Like they're, they have, they are very precise in, the, in, in what they want to accomplish. And they, well, what do you think that they don't give an F means? Like they don't care about humanity. They, they, the humanity, you know, that I'm talking about right now, like this a worry game. I'm going to leave you with something to build with. Again, well, I feel like they, they'll sacrifice their people. They got Muslims in concentration. They will they will sacrifice their people, but they will not sacrifice their autonomy or risk the full ability to be able to advance the cause of being Chinese, right? They but will not, they, they will, will not. not say that. Go ahead, they will not what? They will not sacrifice that, meaning that what they have consistently proven, especially since their revolution, since 1949, is that they're loyal to the idea of the revolution, which also ties into their level of autonomy. Now, who has to die in relation to that? They will fudge and deal with those numbers. But the total obliteration related to like the Chinese people, I don't think they're prepared to do. They're not like what we thought the Russians to be. It's interesting, and I say it like that because during the Cold War, as we were growing up, right, we were fed that the Russians would be willing to kind of like risk it all and blow us up. When I have talked to Russians, they're like, no, we thought you were the crazy ones, right? Like so every, it so was, was operating under propaganda. It, it was like, we weren't necessarily going for that, but we thought, you know, you would be, destroy us. Now, again, I'm biased as an American, right? Right. Of these three, Russia, America, and China, just, you know, I mean, obviously there are more, but of these three, I am willing to believe of those three countries, the one that's willing to kind of like, oh, I risk it all, is the United States of America. I'm not convinced it's China. I'm not convinced it's Russia. Because, because for them, for the Russians especially, and for the Chinese, they recognize that there's no other place on earth where there is the idea, the long-standing history of the Russian people, of the Chinese people, right? Americans have this loose idea of the American people, but we're really a hodgepodge of a lot of different people. We don't so, one without a real culture or history. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, let's pause there. Let's. Uh, I need to. I need to sit on that for a second. Um, okay. And I so want. That's to, what I think. I I, mean, I, mean, I, I I want us to look next time at the other chart that they they have. Um, and I want to juxtapose. Okay. And maybe we might even look at the Soviet chart or, or the Russian yeah, chart because I think Russia's coming back into play. Ah. Okay. To be continued. 
Samuel, okay. uh, thank you for, and listen, um, I'm happy. I'm happy you, you're here. You look good. Uh, I'm thank happy you. you're, you're participating in this. Listen, this is, this to me is a journey. We're trying to figure some things out uh, and have uh, conversations around it, not rooted in uh, nonsense. Cause I know some people think this is nonsense, but it's not, it's science on, on many levels, but also, you know, we need to have these conversations at a deeper level than what we've been having them. So right, thank, right. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all next week. It'll be more Samuel Reynolds. Follow him at SF Reynolds on the Twitters. And S, is it Sam Reynolds on YouTube? What you have? Well, what it, they should just do Unlock Astrology or look for Unlock Astrology. Okay, on and, YouTube. and go to unlockastrology.com, especially if you want to get your chart read, because he's doing that. Did I give you my birthday yet? Nope, I didn't. Okay. No, I have your birth date. Yeah, right? of course. But I don't have your birth. time. Right. All right. But I haven't looked it up, but I'll talk to you about that later. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> see. I'm, I'm inching, I'm putting my toe out there. We'll see what happens. See All you right. next week, my brother. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. All right, love you. Love you too.